Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again, and I wanted to share with you perhaps the worst workout in the world. And that's saying a lot because I have a lot of shitty workouts, but today, my friends, today takes the cake, and that's because I started my volume block training. So as you guys probably know, this is my first day back in the gym since doing my powerlifting meet about a week and a half ago. So first, a full day back on regular programming and not deloading. And let me tell you, it was a bit of a doozy. Now, I've really never done a volume training block before, so for this, I'm really relying on one of my good friends, Garrett Blevins, who has his own YouTube channel, who is a very strong man, and he also offers some coaching services out there if you're looking for a great coach. And part of this is, is he has done this in the past, so I'm really looking to him to help me figure this out for myself because I've never done it. And once I do it, I'll probably take it and make it my own a little bit based off of the things that I found, but I don't like to necessarily make changes to programs too soon without giving them a fair shot. So I really wanna thank Garrett. I'll be sure to link him in the description box below like I normally do when I talk about him. So think of him as the Marty Gennetti to my Shawn Michaels, or the Ax to my Smash, or the Big Boss Man to my Akeem, maybe the Hawk to my Animal, maybe, the Rick Martel to my Tito Santana. Props to anyone who got those references, although knowing me, I'll probably flash some pictures or video on the screen in timely fashion. So what you're seeing here is my actual first volume day, and as part of this, I really wanna work on some of my weak points, which some might say is a little bit of everything. So the first thing up for this day that I really want to focus on are sumo deadlifts. Now for me, it's really interesting because when I first learned how to deadlift back in high school, and some might say they had high schools back in the prehistoric age. Or, hey, Brandon, I heard you're going to be in the new Jurassic Park movie. You know what I got to say to that? Fuck you, bitches. But for this, I learned how to actually pull deadlifts in the sumo stance in high school. That's how they taught everybody. It wasn't until years later that I switched to conventional and got really comfortable doing it because at the time, sumo was the way to go. Sumo was life, my friend. They didn't know it was cheating back then. But as part of that, I have really found that I have weak hips in a lot of different areas from doing a lot of different things or perhaps from not doing a lot of different things. You can do it. You can do it all night long. Take that how you will. But as part of this, I really want to work on my sumos because I feel like if I get my hips stronger, it's going to translate well to all my other lifts. So doing sumos for me is going to be quite the culture shock. It's going to take me some time to adjust. And as you can see from some of these clips that I'm playing on the screen, I have a lot of weak points to address. One of the main issues is just opening my hips and externally rotating out my legs. This is something that's a struggle with me on sumos, obviously, but I've also noticed this is an issue on both my squats and on my bench. So if I can get my hips stronger, I think it's definitely gonna help me in those lifts too, which would be pretty sweet if you do ask me myself. So as you can see here, I spend a lot of time trying to get into a good position, which for me is going to be difficult. And please bear with me on this. I'm gonna do a lot of complaining, which some might say I do normally, but also it's just gonna take me some time to get accustomed to several weeks, in fact, before I feel comfortable pulling sumo. And a lot of this is just getting in the right position and learning the movement correctly. As you can see from some of these angles, I'm all over the bar. It looks like I'm just using all my legs. So Garrett's giving me a lot of great feedback on this because he is a normal sumo puller and he has a tremendous deadlift. And I'm looking forward to getting better at this. But at the same time, it's really frustrating on my end because I really wanna do well and I'm just not able to do that. There's no position right now for sumo which makes me feel comfortable. I feel like I have a really soft lockout and just overall, it's a pain in the butt. And I don't like that. Not to mention we did a ton of volume, as again, the name volume block would imply. So we did eight sets of three at roughly 385 pounds for pulls from the floor. We then moved on to about three inch block pulls of 455 pounds, I believe. Now for this assistance work, I didn't film a ton of it just because there's a lot of sets on this particular day. But I wanted to make sure I got all my main pulls from the floor on sumo, only because again, I really wanted that feedback from Garrett and I wanna see things from a lot of different angles to see myself where I can improve upon. Now once my legs stop being sore and I pull again next week, I'm really looking forward to getting back and trying to make some tweaks and getting better. And as I do, maybe you'll be able to see my own progress as well as learn from the multitude of mistakes that I'm making here in these videos. 
So we did block pulls after for a five by five at 455. So again, a lot of volume on that as well before moving to low bar squats. Now for low bar squats, it called for three sets of 10 at about 360 pounds. Now my first working set of squats, which I recorded, you'll see I only ended up doing eight reps when again called for 10. And that's just because I couldn't get into the groove of things. My thighs were really hurting and really fatigued by this point. And to be honest, I can barely count as high as 10, let alone squat that high. Wait, squatting high. There's a depth joke in there somewhere, I'm sure. So I did three sets of eight instead of three sets of 10. And normally what I find is when I first get on a new program, I kind of ease myself in just a little bit. I work my way in. So this is kind of normal for me, so I'm not too discouraged, not to mention all the working sets we've done of about roughly 13 deadlift sets before this. I was feeling pretty tired, but three sets of eight at 360 pounds, things started to move a little bit better and I should have probably filmed those sets instead because it would have looked a hell of a lot better than what you guys saw, but I wanna really give you and show you what my weak points are for this particular day. From here, we moved on to bent over rows and again, it called for a three by 10. I ended up working up to a heavy set of 225. And I was really conflicted whether I wanted to do bent over rows or if I wanted to do pendle rows, but I figured this would probably be more in the bodybuilding vein. So I decided to go with the bent over rows here. You need to adjust the weight going forward as this was fairly light, but still got a good burn. And that's what it's all about. Or at least that's what Mike Chang tells me. And finally, to finish things off, it was three sets of 15 for hamstring curls. However, as many of you guys have probably noted, there's not a lot of people in my gym. Or so it appears. In fact, there was a good amount of people in the gym this day, and there are most days. However, my gym is split up into two sections, and the area that I'm in with the free weights is one that's not usually very populated. The other portion of the gym, which is much larger, has machines, has turf, that's where the people usually are. So I had to venture over to that side of the gym today to do hamstring curls, and it just didn't really work out for filming, so instead, you guys get to watch what you just saw. You're welcome. Now this workout took me a good amount of time on the lower side estimate, I'd say around two hours, but again, dealing with the volume we were, the different exercises and having to warm up, not to mention my old ass needs to rest, it's just gonna take a little bit more time. So hopefully I get adjusted to that as these workouts go on. But again, just to remind you in case you forgot, I am partnered with NASM, the National Academy of Sports Medicine, to offer you guys two week free trials of their services if you want to go ahead and sign up and make money training people. So if you're not making money on YouTube with your own channel, you can always get certified through NASM and train some people in person instead of over the computer and still make that fat cash. So check them out. You'll find a link in the description box below. But as always, thanks for watching. In the meantime, stay big.